Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera, as usual, is Joshua Blanc. Today we're doing another warm-up exercise and it'll probably be a series where we're talking about geometric things. And we're starting off with our circle. Now we're going to be using our um, graphite uh, 9B pencil by Faber-Castell and it's a solid pencil. Um, they don't sell this except as at Amazon and, and places like that, so direct from art supply stores. So let's get started. We're just going to keep it really simple. So, And the point is to enjoy this exercise. It's uh, It could be a warm-up exercise. And in this case, I don't want you to overlap anything. You're just going to draw circles. Now the way to draw circles is to rehearse them, is to do like this and then go down on your paper. And I don't care if it's round or not. <laughs> but anyway, just circles. And we're going to be doing a graphite transfer. So small circles, big circles. Just have fun with this. Now, it's an opportunity to play. Everybody needs that opportunity. You can make more solid circles. Do circles within circles. You can just go circle crazy. I'm doing this on my tracing paper and we're going to be transferring that to the gel plate, my 8 by 10 gel press uh, gel plate. More inside circles. We won't worry about how um, precious this is because uh, it's just circles. Circles are all around us. Lots of nature. Maybe another one there. Maybe a little tiny circles just to keep it interesting. Whatever you want to do with circles, except overlapping in this case. <laughs> there will be time for that, you will see. Oh, that looks suspiciously not like a circle, so we're going to make it a little rounder. And when you have been I'm totally fed up with doing circles. We'll take it to the gel plate. A few more. The stranger they look, uh, the better actually. That's the whole point. I've already got my paper. Uh, this is the oriental paper ready to print. Drawing on top of the gel plate, just to work it down and then press it down with a barren. Now not all my circles, so you have a few cropping off and that is a good thing. Now it transfers beautifully to the gel plate, but in order to transfer it to our oriental paper, we're going to have to use a medium or a color of some kind. Okay, I can hear Josh cringing in this one. <laughs> okay, no problem. So we're just going to use our uh, golden satin glazing liquid. So I'll throw some on there, not too much. Now all these mediums are very glue-like, so you don't want them to be on your brayer for any length of time. 
The medium is the only way the graphite will transfer, by the way. If you try to transfer it directly, or just from the gel plate, it just won't work. You need a medium of some kind. You can use matte medium as well. Okay, and I'm just going to wipe my brayer off just to be on the safe side about this glue business. Okay, we can place our paper. And brayer it down. We'll have a quick peek to see if it's transferring. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? And the very nice part is when you do this, you have all these marks left on your plate. So now we can play even more. <laughs> all right. So today we're going to use our Distress Crayons again. And so we'll pick out some colors, something interesting, maybe orange and yellow. We'll save the cool colors for later. Now there's one little trick you have to learn. And now you wet your, your plate. Now it'll beat a bit, but the water will stay in place. You don't want too much. A little sponge brush comes in handy for that. If you run out of water, I just have a little tiny little um, tool here that um, helps me. So now we start. Now this is going to take some time, so Joshua put some music on and we'll just roar through this part. <laughs> We've uh, put some of the color on. We're now needing to wait for it to dry. So we'll take an interlude and um, then we'll get back. <laughs> While well, we've dried this as best we can, uh, doing several things. I had my little blower on and at quite a distance. It has a bit of heat at that level and also um, just using a, one of my plates and going like this. <laughs> you can wave your hand at it, but just, it won't do much good. That's probably the most tedious part is waiting for things to dry. And it's a bit like watercolor that way because we are doing subtle colors today. So much of gel plate printing uh, is really brilliant and maybe you want to go the other way sometimes and this is one way to do it. Okay we're going to add some matte medium, uh, golden matte medium and we'll just see the difference in the way it prints. It's not much difference between the glazing liquid but I think sometimes for pickup uh, the matte medium is actually better. So we'll roll it out. Now, if it hasn't quite dried in spots, uh, 
it just might smear a little bit, but that could be interesting. And like any transfer, you want just enough and not too much. Otherwise, all you're picking up is medium and nothing of the image. So that should be good. And let's see how subtle our color is today and whether it's going to go inside the circles like the way we did it. The graphite um, just gives it a little bit more structure because the colors are very subtle. You will see when we pick it up. And it's just a hint of color. It's very lovely. While we were waiting for it to dry, I did a little bit more Posca pen, just or uh, not Posca, but the um, or Distress Crayons, and uh, just added a little bit more color. And as you can see, it came out really well. There's a bit of smearing going on, but not much, so we were okay for dryness. I'm just going to put it back because we need to do another drawing. And it's fine there, now that we've picked it up the first time. So another sheet of tracing paper and our pencil. And this time we're going to go a little bit more three-dimensionally. We're going to do a series of bubbles. And uh, so I'm just going to start with the shapes of the bubbles. And they'll probably be pretty well all the same size. And they're just sort of going to meander all over the place. Just think of uh, bubbles floating on the surface of water, maybe with a bit of wind. I'm going to just add some line work. And it's okay if it overlaps the bubbles. Add a few more. Maybe some coming off. Some rising from below. Sometimes when the plants deteriorate, uh, they produce carbon dioxide and that floats to the surface or they might be producing oxygen then and well that will float to the surface too. Okay so lots of little bubbles so we're just going to give it some shading. We're going to be printing this right over top of what's there on the gel plate already. We'll see how it does. So you'll have your first group of circles in the background. Hopefully. <laughs> you never know how things turn out. But these graphite drawings, uh, you can do lots of ghost prints before uh, they're not workable anymore. So as a series, you can continue to work and add stuff. More color, more line. This is where you get the opportunity to play. So make it your own. Give it some pizzazz. It would probably be lovely to use iridescent paints. There are watercolor iridescent paints that you could use. Uh, 
and of course you can always resort to the acrylic colors. Um, just use a lot of medium to water them down so they're not so intense. The whole point of this exercise is to do more subtle things. Not have blindingly garish acrylic colors, but just subtle. Not that we don't all love blindingly garish. <laughs> They are very dramatic, aren't they? Okay, so we have our bubbles, such as it goes. And we'll just take this back. We could actually remove that because I think we're going to do a whole new, new sheet. Okay. Now again, on my tracing paper, I haven't really measured anything. I have sort of, I sort of know where things are and if they crop off the edges, it's a, a good thing. Cropping is interesting. So we can remove this. Okay, now let's see if it's printed over top of my, there's a few bubbles here I'm just getting rid of. Bubbles on bubbles. <laughs> Josh is breaking up over there. <laughs> he has a very strange sense of humor. Anyway. <laughs> oh, look at that. Very nice. Okay, we're going to change uh, paper direction slightly. Uh, it's just a good quality um, drawing paper. So it, it will take some water media. So Posca pens are interesting. Um, again, we're going to water things down a little bit. Not too much. We had a long wait for last time, so I'm going to take most of it off again. Yeah, we're just going to draw our lines. Just sort of create a graphic structure that will help. And hoping also that a lot of the little circles will print, right? So, and let's print this before we go any further. Okay, a little bit of drawing time again. What I'm going to do maybe is, yeah, this will make it faster. I didn't really want the Poscas to obscure the graphite. So, and we'll take just a garbage print. That's kind of interesting that you could work with it. Again, we just want to dry enough for our medium. Okay, so back to our medium. We'll be doing more Posca pen stuff, but um, I just wanted that structure in the background. You have to do what you have to do. Okay, we will register this too. Just let that sit for a minute. Taper down.
Now we don't know at this point if it's going to pick up any of that first layer. But if it does, that could be very interesting. Oh, and it does exactly what I wanted to do. Look at that. So we have a nice sort of shadowy effect of circles in the background. That's perfect. And look at how our circles, aren't graphic transfers just the best? <laughs> well, I love it when things work. <laughs> Don't, you know, I know I get all excited and crazy, but it's nice when it works out. Okay, our circles. Okay, we'll start with a lighter color our little bubbles and um, are you one of these people who um, got told you know to color within the lines well you don't have to if you don't want to just tell them I said so <laughs> So this is a great family exercise, um, you know, on a dull rainy day when you've got your, your wits end with the kids and you want them to do something creative and fun. Well, with good supervision, you know, we're dealing with materials that need good supervision and just have fun or get your neighbor um, your lonely neighbor who, you know, is retired and, you know, the best thing she can do is knit maybe. So get her over and play with these Posca pens and circles. She'll be over every week. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun thing to do with friends. Okay, we have a little bubble sort of under control. And then we'll just give it a bit of shading with a little bit of... Because we wet the black, um, it's not so in your face we won't need to do, we could maybe do some shading underneath that and just to make it look like a, like a wave. Of course, uh, you know me, I'm always thinking about our lakes and since I live on one and really it's the theme of our whole studio. So a lot of what we start, uh, do has to do with water, stewardship, how precious water is and to take care of it. And now we are just going to do something really crazy. Yeah, we're going to smear it all. <laughs> but not too much water. So you can play with the shapes a little bit. So it becomes sort of a watercolor. Now it would just be spots like that, this one here, if we didn't let it dry. So again, we're gonna to have to take time to let stuff dry. Take a break, grab yourself your tea, your coffee, um, contemplate circles, uh, watch as Josh puts an interlude in and uh, 
have a grand time. Okay. Okay, interlude over. <laughs> so I've grabbed some silver. Maybe we'll do something sparkly. And I've added a lot of medium to it, uh, our um, satin glazing liquid. And I'm um, hoping all our bubbles are dry. And we're just going to roll this on. All we need is a release coat at this point. And we don't want to spread the color too much. But we do want to release all the color, so. And we still want to keep it subtle. So that's why the silver. Well, there's a nice sheen. So let's print this. So take some time with uh, getting that plate all burnished nicely to remove that layer. Make sure you have your edges as usual. And remember this isn't the oriental paper. It takes the paint a bit differently. And hoping that everything will come off. Oh, yes. So it definitely looks watery. And we have a silvery sheen. That's quite nice. And we could probably run a ghost print just with medium. See what happens here. Working it on quickly. It might even do several ghost prints. Let's use our oriental paper for that on the smooth side. The oriental paper will just pick everything up better. And let's see how our ghost print worked. Almost as nice, not quite the same intensity and not picking up the graphite so much. But pretty nice, just the same. So it's a little wet from the medium still. Okay, we'll let all that dry. We'll post it at the end of the video as usual. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for supporting our channel. We're almost at 600 subscribers now, so that's just awesome. And uh, take care of yourselves and your families as always. Join us here for fun times at uh, Shoreline Studio. Um, experimenting and um, taking time to play. It's really, really important. Bye for now. <laughs>